In this short video, we are going to build the Eat More Vegetable user interface. And for that, the first thing I'd like to do is bring up the two assets that you've already downloaded from the tutorial website. And what we want to do here is open up the assets folder and just drag and drop those two icons to the asset so that we can use it later on to get a background image for our buttons. And then we switch back to the main storyboard and we need quite a few labels here. So let me just bring up a label here by typing it into our object library. We have one label here, which we are going to use to enter eat more fruit and vegetable. And what I did here is I pressed option and return so that I get a new line and I enter and vegetable here. And since I cannot see anything yet, we need to make one adjustment to the label. As you can see here, I have two lines, but we need to change that to two lines so that the change is also reflected right here. So let's put that label into the top left corner, increase it in size a little bit, and then also increase the font size here and maybe also make it bold so that it looks something like this. Then what we also need a label for is for the add fruit button. So we have an add fruit label and then I can copy that and just paste that. And let's call that add vegetable. Then we have another label with your history. So I'm just copying that, copy and paste that, put that somewhere here, name it your history which is the heading for the table view that we are also going to add in a second, just adjusting the size here a little bit. And then we bring up some of the buttons. So I just use a button here in my object library and I'm going to choose the Apple background image right here. So I'm adding Apple here to the background. I'm removing the button text and I'm going to increase the size off my button 200 by 100 pixels. So I'm going to the size inspector and change width and height to 100. So then we place it somewhere here, place the label right beneath it. And then I'm copying my button here, putting it to the right side. Let's change the image to salad. And then we have our nice two buttons here. I'm adjusting the position of the add vegetable label here a bit. And then I'm also going to select all of that and move it down a little bit more so that we have a nice spacing here. And then we have your history here. Then what we also need is a table view. So I'm adding table view here into my search box for the object library, adding a table view right there. I'm going to make it edge to edge. So I'm placing it right there, right below the your history and increase the size a little bit. And this is an empty table view. And what we need to do here is adding another table view cell. So let me just drag and drop that to my table view. And then we have an empty table view cell, which we're going to adjust so that it's not a basic uh, table view cell, but a subtitle table, a table view cell so that we can have both a title and a subtitle. And later for coding, what we also need to do is make sure that this table view cell has a reuse identifier, which we're going to specify in the attributes inspector, just naming it cell so that we can later reuse the tail view cell using cell for row at index path function. And the last piece of user interface is the remind me button. So I'm adding another button to the top right corner here, which we are not going to implement in this tutorial, but on the um, YouTube tutorial on user notifications, but let's add it nevertheless. So we have remind me here, and we're going to make that bold. So let's just select bold here and increase the size a little bit, just like that. And then we're also going to change the color here. So I'm using the text color, choosing other, and then I'm using the color picker here just to pick this color so that it kind of fits to the rest of the user interface. And with that, we're actually ready laying out 
all of the pieces of our user interface. Now we also want to make sure that we have set all of the necessary constraints or auto resizing masks. And auto resizing masks are great for things like that where we just have to pin our user interface component to the top left corner. And due to the font size and so on, this label has an intrinsic content size, which means that we do not need to adjust much here. And as you can see, the auto resizing mask is already set for the top left corner. So let's have a look at our remind me button. And this is going to be the top right corner. And with that, we are pretty much done with these two things. And as you can see, when I scale that up to an iPhone 7 plus, or even an iPad, this just follows along, but not the rest of our user interface. So let's go back to the iPhone 7. And let's set some constraints for the rest of our user interface here. Let's start with our add fruit button here. And I'm pressing control on the keyboard. And what we need to define when we're using constraints is first of all, an X and a Y position. So I'm pressing control on the keyboard to set a new constraint. I am clicking on my button and I want this button to always have this distance from the top. So I'm dragging to the top of my screen and let's say vertical spacing to top layout guide. And I'm doing the same to for the leading space to the left, which is the leading space to the container margin. And as you can see, we now have some blue lines and some orange lines or yellow lines, which indicate that there is still a misplacement. And what we can do here here is either if we have a look at the suggestion here, we can either accept this and change the size of our button to 128 by 128, which is not what we want. So we fix the size ourselves by pressing control with and click and drag within our button like this. And then we can select two more constraints and by pressing shift, on the keyboard, I can select two constraints at once, clicking on width and height and pressing return. And then we only have blue lines, which indicate that the auto layout engine is satisfied and there are no ambigu uh, ambiguous constraints. So we move on to our add fruit label, which we just vertical space like this. So we add vertical spacing to our button. And then we also want to center it horizontally according to the button or depending on where the button actually is. And due to the intrinsic content size of our label, we do not need to define a width or height. And now what we can also do because we already have set the Y position for our button here for the left button, we can make the right button for the vegetable depend on what the left button already did. So we can just say that we want to orient that at the top. So we add a top constraint here. And as you can see there now, just at the same position for Y. And then what we can also do is set a trailing space to contain a margin always by pressing control on a keyboard and dragging to the corresponding location. So let's select trailing space to contain a margin. And then again, fix the width and height and hit return here. And then let's do the same for this one vertical spacing center horizontally, and we're done. And then let's do the same thing for our table view here. And I'm selecting the table view. And now since I cannot really reach any edge of my view, I'm going to drag to the view controller scene here on the left and just selecting the container view. And I'm selecting leading space to contain a margin and trailing space to contain a margin, which is the distance to the left and to the right. And also vertical spacing to bottom layout guide, which is to the bottom of our screen. So I'm selecting all of those three constraints and I always pressed shift on my keyboard. Now I hit return to apply them. But as you can see, we still have a red line here around our table view, which means that our table view is not correctly laid out for auto layout. So what's still missing is a height or a Y position. We're going to use a height constraint here just to fix that in height. So I'm 
dragging from the top to the bottom somewhere like this and defining the height and as you can see everything turned blue now and the last thing we do is positioning our your history label by simply selecting it pressing control drag it to our table view select vertical spacing here and then also a leading space. And again, we have an orange or yellow line here around our your history label because the label is too big. So it's just a little bit too large in width. And as you can see here, when we have a look at the misplaced views by clicking on this little indicator in our view controller scene, it has an, expect an expected width of 136, which is the intrinsic content size, and it has an actual width of 145. And if I press on that button here, or click on that button, then I can either update the frames or update the constraints. Since we want this year history label to have exactly the same size as the text, we can simply say update frames, fix the misplacement, and we're definitely done. So with that, we have completed the user interface. We have used all the layout constraints. We also have used the auto resizing masks for easy situations like the top left label or this remind me button. Now, the last thing we really need to do is to add our buttons or to add the necessary outlets and IB actions to our view controller class. So let's bring up the assistant editor and let's close the view controller scene here so that we have a little more space. And we're going to start with the add fruit button. So I'm clicking on it, pressing control on the keyboard and drag it to my view controller class right below view to load. And I'm selecting an IV action here. The name is going to be uh, going to be add food, food to database. And the type is not going to be any but UI button and we hit connect. So this is our IB action for adding food to the database, but we have two buttons and we actually want to have only one function. So what we can do is also selecting our add vegetable button and also by pressing control on the keyboard and dragging it to that function, we can make it react to the same or pressing this add vegetable button and the add fruit button will call the same function, which is called add food to database. But how can we now decide which button was actually pressed? Well, therefore, we're going to need the tag property of those two buttons. So when we press on the attributes inspector, as you can see here, we have a tag of zero, which is just like a tag to identify an object. And this right button also has a tag of zero. And we're going to change that to one so that we can easily decide if add vegetable was pressed or add fruit was pressed. But more on that in the written tutorial, just a little down below. So this was the first function that we actually added. Now what we also need is one simple outlet for our table view. So I'm pressing control on the keyboard and drag it to the top area here right below the class definition. And I'm simply calling that outlet table view and hit return. And with that, we have connected all the user interface components that we need to the view controller class. And now you can continue with the written tutorial.